right guys, we're back at the house and that right there is a good load of hickory logs, about 300 board feet. But before we get these unloaded, I need to take care of something. Right, friends here's what's going on this is a catapa log it was brought to me over a year ago and it is a monster friends but unfortunately it's not a good saw log and here's why you can see right here in the cut that we just made all that ring shape that's going on see these growth rings right here that are separated by this split well that's called ring shape when you see that in a log it's very bad down here on the other end, more of the same. Got more of that terrible rain shake right there on the outside. Wow, it's a lot worse right there. Check that out. That's about an eighth of an inch crack right there in the grain. Got the pith right there in the middle. Of course, it's cracked as well. Just a very low grade log and no commercial sawmill that I know of would put this on their sawmill. It would go directly to the pulpwood pile or the burn pile. Now here's the piece we just cut. As you can see right there, more of the same. It's all the way through this log, friends. And green shake is caused by disease. Some say it's also caused by stress in the tree when it's growing. Both of those may be true, I'm not sure, but I see it a lot in hemlock around here and not so much in hardwoods, but you never know. On the Jenga scale, I think I'm saying that right, which tests the hardness or the density of a tree is probably pretty low on something like this. But I thought we might get some decent firewood out of this, but it's all rotted, guys. Check it out. I'm doing some test cuts right there with my council tool uh, fowler's hatch right there. And unfortunately, it's just rotted everywhere, guys. Real soft stuff right there. So we got two choices here. My first choice today was make firewood out of it. That ain't gonna happen. It's too rotten in the middle. So it looks like I'll probably come in here and make two more cuts, that way it's not so heavy, and take it down to the burn pile. That's the way it goes sometimes, friends. You win some, you lose some. A pretty good workout for the 880. I'm not ran this thing in a long time. We're not familiar with this chainsaw. This is, I think, the biggest chainsaw or the most powerful one that steel mates. I got a three foot bar on there. It's pretty powerful. It ripped through at Chautauqua like nothing. So let's go get the 754. I got the grapple on it and get these things moved out of the way and I'll get my road back. I've been driving around this log for the past year or so. It'd be nice to have it out of my way.
All right, friends, we're gonna end this video with a real quick log. It's a red cedar. I can't remember where this came from. Probably that log inside across town, if I remember. I think he cut these last year. Cedar's hard to get around here because uh, the bigger ones get voids in the middle, and the smaller ones, the loggers won't fool with it. And just so the comments don't explode, we call it Eastern Red Cedar in this area, ERC. A lot of people call it Juniper and all kinds of different things, but that's what we call it here. So that's what we're gonna call it on this video. So this is a smaller log, it's an eight footer. The diameter on the other end is nine inches. On the operator's side, we're looking at 10 inches. So one of the questions I get on these videos by a lot of you sawyers is, how do I size my log for the cant size that I want or a post or whatever? Now this cedar, I'm hoping for a four by four, and therefore I need at least six inches on the diameter on the small end. So here's the method that I go by when I think about sawing a post or a cant. And this will differ a little if you think about doing four by sixes or different dimensions, but if it's a solid dimension on both planes, like an eight by eight or six by six, four by four, or what have you, here's a good way to kind of size your logs to make sure you got a big enough log to get the post that you want. Now the formula that I use when I think about sawing up a log and what size I need for the cant that I'm after or a post, same thing, is pretty simple. But it's also on the Forestry Forum Toolbox. There's a link down below to check that out. It's a free little site you can go to. I got a shortcut on my phone. and You can type in your dimensions there as well and get the same thing. If you're doing like four by sixes, that's really good as well because this doesn't work for something like that. This only works if you had the same dimension on both planes, like I was saying. So if I wanted an eight by eight out of this, I would take one of those numbers, the number eight, I would divide it by two and get four. Then I would take that four, add it to the eight and get 12. And that's the number I need on my small end for my log, 12 inches. Six by six is the same way. I need a nine inch log. Four by four, I need a six inch log. So it's pretty simple. You take one of those numbers, divide it by two, and then add it back on it. And you smack a mosquito when it's trying to bite you when you're trying to explain something on YouTube. But uh, that's, what he, that's what you do, guys. It's pretty easy. You know, you just divide it by two and add it right back on, and that's what you need on your small end. Now make sure it's your small end and not the large end because you always want to measure off your small end. On the sawmill this evening, we're running the Joe Main Silver Tip Turbo 7. I get those from Joe down in Georgia. If you want those blades, give him a call. His cell phone number is down in the video description. So let's get going, guys, and see how we do. We should easily get a four by four out of this cedar. Smells pretty good, too. Proposition makes me 